seems I returned from my last journey a little late to film the salmon run on this uh, on the Chehalis River here. It's already finished. And the Eagle Festival that takes place here every year because the eagles always gather, of course, to take some of the salmon. Uh, there would have been a few bears along here too, I imagine. And uh, this Chehalis River comes out of a very narrow canyon up ahead. And uh, in my younger days, I'd gone up through that canyon and uh, come down in canoe. But um, the lake quite a ways up in the mountains. That's more or less the source for it, besides several small tributaries. But uh, this is a major, major salmon stream. And one of the many good places to fish here in British Columbia. You can see how pristine and clear the water is. There's nothing upstream from here that would uh, pollute or discolor the water. And it's what a beautiful river. I often wish I was still young enough to go hiking up the river. Some places you have to wade partly through it in order to get from one little landfall to the next. And very, very rough canoeing when you go upstream. This is about uh, oh, 20 kilometers from the monastery. It's typical of the land landscape uh, around our area. I think I'll add this to the uh, video I made a little bit earlier, the flowers that are still blooming at the monastery. I just wanted to walk slightly into the woods here a little bit and uh, give an idea of what our, our sort of rainforest looked like here up in these tight canyons and valleys that uh, I get nostalgic sometimes because in 1962-63 I used to roam around in these places. Uh, up there I can, I can see the huckleberry bushes all cleaned off of course but the leaves haven't fallen yet. It's only, only November, the, a lot of the change won't take place until mid-December. Just I'll stroll along here a little and take a look. Might be kind of interesting to some of you to see what this part of British Columbia looks like. Long path ends at uh, mountain ledge with something of a stair step type trail going up and we had climbed it many years ago and many times actually uh, a lot of bl wild blueberries up there to pick and just interesting beautiful hiking and nothing stays the same in nature used to be a little picnic ground here but the high waters washed it all out I don't know if you can see the uh, high cliff through the trees, but uh, and I think how many times I climbed that four decades ago. How many times I'd fished in this river in the 60s and camped out here a few times, sometimes up on the top of the bluff. Okay, these are salmon fry that are being raised to be released next year. You can see the mass of them. I think if I wave my arm, you'll see them scatter. That'll make it a little more visible, see the masses of them. We're at a salmon hatchery now, not, also not far from the monastery. And uh, this is enhancement program that uh, raises and releases these salmon. 
I hope you can see through the water this uh, huge, huge mass of thousands and thousands of salmon fry. They cluster together, but flee when they see somebody up above walking along. You can see how fast they dart along. They have to survive. Um, in, the, in the regular streams, they'd have to survive. Well, bears wouldn't go for ones this small usually, but seagulls, heron, and, uh, and eagles, and some other predatory birds would go for them. Let's take a look around a little at uh, the salmon, salmon hatchery and enhancement program here. Have to keep the water flowing. It flows in at the far end and constantly out this way. The water can't be left still. Um, wouldn't be healthy for the for the fry, the salmon fry. And uh, hoping to see some uh, mature salmon, but maybe maybe a little late in the season for that. see the netting stretched across. This, of course, is to keep predatory birds out. Otherwise, the, uh, not very many of the salmon would survive. Our problem at the monastery with our little lake is uh, usually the heron. We have great blue heron and gray heron who come, and they catch a lot of the, oh, the fish out of it. They, talked about stretching netting like this across sometimes, and perhaps we will one day. It would be particularly interesting, but for those of you who haven't visited a, uh, this, this uh, fishery uh, specifically for coho salmon, and the others are for pink. I can see a few salmon in here that haven't quite made it up the stream, haven't petered out. They're coming back up to uh, finish spawning and then go the way of all flesh, die. I don't know if you can see through the water enough to see all of the salmon under the water. They're uh, spawning here amongst the rocks and once they lay their eggs, they'll be finished with their life and die. And bears and eagles generally get their fill, but um, these are all coho, so if you buy coho salmon in a tin or something, you'll see how, where they're spawning at. By the time they get this far, they're actually pretty well coming apart. Part of the skin is coming off and the fins are weakening. They've had a big struggle to get this far up against very steep, sometimes steep uh, waterfalls, sometimes just very flat flowing water. And they always follow some sense to come to the place where they were born. And that's where they deposit their eggs. It seems many creatures besides humans have what they call a hometown. The uh, seagulls downstream are gathering. They'll pick off the ones that are dead and float to the surface. At the height of the season, it would look almost as if you could walk across some of these streams on the backs of the salmon because uh, there's so many thousands of them. I'm trying to catch a couple of them jumping as they come into this pool. So they have water flowing down, they sometimes try to go up automatically as if it were a waterfall and uh, get into the spawning grounds where they were born. The 
I'll just have some of them at this point. They need gravel or rocks generally in which to spawn. You see some of them going up against the water that's coming out of the grave. Just uh, something ingrained in them where they have to try to dump the water flowing out uh, as they have with so many waterfalls on the way here. Got to hold it for a few minutes and see if we get a couple of more trying to jump. Well, this might be interesting to some of you who have not had the privilege of being around salmon spawning grounds or watching a salmon run. They're evidently trying to rechannel them for some reason, but they certainly want to get back into that channel where they were born. And uh, they send all their senses carry them toward that moment. See how huge some of them are. Yeah. The ones that are edible would have been caught way down the river, not here. So, not sure why they box them out of the channel they want to get into, but for some reason you can see what a mass of gathering they are. They're walking over a whole bevy of them, or army of them, roped off here, and uh, some of them have made it back up into this channel, and you can see them along the edge, and jumping and leaping. There's one that just made it over this grid. Yeah, I see the way they're channeling them. They have to jump over this one gate to get into the spawning area. I'm hoping to catch one jumping over for you, but I don't seem to be able to. Huge, huge fish. 